It was a three year project and it focused on digital technologies. So we were looking at collaborating with colleagues in Austria and in Germany, looking at an app platform that would allow us to share the cultural heritage really for the wider Roman Limes across Europe. So the two of us um, in Germany and in Scotland were part of what's called the Frontiers of the Roman Empire World Heritage Site. So that's a serial transnational World Heritage Site. And we wanted to find a way of communicating the, the stories, um, sharing the collections and the museums and sharing the, the sites really with a wider audience and bringing those, those things together, the stories, the collections, the sites um, into one interpretive approach. So the project consortium consisted of four partners. Um, two were the um, competent authorities um, in the field of cultural heritage, and that's in Bavaria, the Bavarian Institute um, or Bavarian Office um, for Cultural Heritage, by the Spat Landesamt für Denkmalpflege, and in Scotland, um, Historic Environment Scotland. Um, we also had two commercial partners involved. Um, that's the Centre for um, Digital Documentation and Visualisation based in Glasgow here in Scotland, and an Austrian partner, a small company called Edo Film and Median, um, who are involved in developing digital content and um, technologies um, for, for learning education in the field of cultural heritage. Creative Europe has allowed our organisation to work much more effectively internationally because it provided that funding that wasn't available um, to work across different geographical borders. Obviously, working in Scotland, we have expertise, we have the professionalism you know, to deliver the project, but we didn't have the ability to look more widely at um, funding something of this scale. So we, we really couldn't... Um, we couldn't have delivered the product that we did within the confines of Scotland. We needed that, that international expertise, that funding that actually went a bit further and that took us sort of beyond our own geographical boundary to do it. It was also interesting to have the opportunity to share different approaches and, and expertise between the partners from the different countries. Um, just um, seeing how how we differently present and interpret cultural heritage to the public and, and work with each other and com compare our approaches, but also um, slightly fight about our, our preferences um, and, and come to, to a common um, joint conclusion in the end. Um, so have a coherent interpretation of, of the sites across this transnational world heritage. I think for Historic Environment Scotland, probably the, the networking and the building of professional relationships has been the, the best thing to come out of it. We all knew each other before we actually started the project, but it was a kind of um, a, a light touch knowing each other. We'd, we'd worked on um, strategy and on policy things, but we hadn't really worked properly together. And I think the project over the three years gave us the opportunity to get to know colleagues really well to get to understand their specialisms, their expertise, um, and to make use of that. So, you know, it kind of went beyond just the project into other areas of our work. We were able to then approach them for help with other things that we were doing and, and properly and truly, I guess, work collaboratively. Um, and for me, I think the, the learning that's come out of it really has been the CPD opportunities, just that opportunity to visit um, lots of other different sites to, to see how you know, digital technology is working, both for visitor centres, for museums, um, to see how some of the experts were working in Austria to create new resources, way beyond our budget, I have to say, but you know things that we could only ever aspire to. But it was nice to see them and to get a feel for what we could think about back in Scotland. So I think it's expanded my horizons in terms of, in terms of how we, we looked at heritage and heritage sector. Looking at the cross-sectoral side of it, there's been a lot of benefit from the Creative Europe programme. So not just looking within your own specialism, but looking at different practitioners and what you can learn from them, you know, from the arts and heritage sector together, or from, in our case, the digital and the heritage joining up. And those opportunities, I think, have been fantastic. And we would like to see more of that um, going forward so that we're not just working within 
our own immediate sphere, but we're actually looking at some of those, those transferable options and those cross-sectoral opportunities. For Historic Environment Scotland, we are distributing the branded app um, within the UK, but we also have a white label version that we're open to sharing um, freely with other heritage organisations, other community organisations. So if they want to use that, they can get in touch with us. Um, and our partners in Germany are now doing the same for Europe. Um, they're currently in discussions with Romanian colleagues um, for how they distribute that and how they share it across other organisations. Probably the favourite moment was when we managed to bring about 50 different European colleagues to Lancet for our final seminar. And that was the moment I think it really brought home that we'd actually achieved something that had um, an impact beyond you know, just our own organisations because the aim really was to try and create a, a free resource using the Creative Europe funding that could then be rolled out to other European partners. And when we had those 50 people in the room, that was really the first time we'd actually seen that properly in action, you know, beyond the sort of the, the seven or eight of us involved in the project. Um, and that was, that was a really nice validation that we were actually doing something that had an impact. It, it was the site visit to our Bavarian case study site, um, which is a fort and or the remains, archaeological remains of a, of a fort, a quite wide cultural landscape. And particularly the, the um, elements on a hillside are hardly visible today. So being able to visit the site, but then also having seen what we create as, as models, virtual models from, from reconstructions, from, from actual objects in museums, and to connect that through, through our app, through the technology to this particular site, which I'm not an archeologist, so interpreting the site um, is, is not easy for me, but having this, this tool, this tangible thing suddenly to, to connect object and site was just um, very, very fascinating.